two image references are imported into the scene. The first step involves adjusting the depth to in front and disabling perspective, while setting the opacity to a range of 1 to 2 for optimal visibility. Additionally, an AI-generated 3D mesh is imported for further reference. We'll also need a head base mesh later on. A UV sphere is created under meshed. Pivot tool conveniently moved to the quick favorites for easy access. The sides are pushed in using the move tool. For sculpting the jaw, I use the grab tool. The mesh is rotated to match the reference image, with the head's rotation indicated by the cross on its surface. The eye sockets are carved using the clay strips brush, followed by adjustments to the angle of the triangle formed between them. I start by pressing the M key to activate the mask tool. Then I invert the mask with Ctrl I. Next, I move the pivot point to the border of the mask. Once the pivot point is in place, I move and rotate the mask. while the mouth and eyes were sculpted using the blob tool. The mouth is given an oval-like shape, and the geometry is remeshed whenever it becomes stretched. The blob tool was also used for the eyes. While the clay strips and draw sharp brushes were used to carve out specific shapes as much as possible, I rotate the chin and the jaw is slightly extended to complete the rough sculpt. I smoothed the whole mesh using mesh filter and made some adjustments. To ensure the accuracy of angles, a side reference can be utilized. This reference provides a different perspective from the main view, allowing for the verification of angles. I use an add-on like Quadra Mesher to create a new base mesh. By adjusting the quad count and enabling symmetry, a detailed and symmetrical base mesh can be obtained.
Once the base mesh is created, the proportional editing tool becomes essential for shaping and refining the model. This tool, activated by pressing the O key, allows for precise control over individual vertices. By adjusting the proportional editing tool size using the mouse wheel, I can control the influence of vertex manipulation on surrounding vertices. Go into X-ray mode and hide the back of head to prevent any distractions. Additionally, the knife tool, K, can be used to insert additional geometry where necessary, providing greater flexibility in shaping the model. To save time and effort, eyes and ears can be borrowed from the base mesh, as they are typically similar across individuals. By creating openings for the eyes using loop tools, I can integrate the eyes seamlessly into the model. Loop Tools is a free built-in add-on. I will use Relax and Bridge options in the video. I join the two meshes by choosing them and pressing Ctrl J. The outer loop's edge number should be equal on both sides. Face sets can be used to fix any imperfections in the mesh. By selecting the area in Edit Mode and switching to Sculpt Mode, I can create a face set from the selection. The Fair Tangency option can then be applied to smooth out the surface. Mesh symmetrization can also be performed at any point to ensure symmetry across the model. Our mesh is almost finished. I'll make some final adjustments to make it look correct. You can remesh this again for a cleaner version. Quadra Mesher has a one month free trial. This is the end of the sculpting process. If you want to add more details to your model, you'll need to use a multi-resolution modifier. In that case, do what I do here.